in this episode, we are going to look at zero force members. Zero force members. It's still under analysis of what? Structures. So, do we see that in a trust, sometimes the members are what? Many. From the other episode, the previous episode, we counted one of the members of a trust and we got what? 21 what? Members. There are too many. So, can I make analysis of all these 21 members and look at the forces acting inside of each or at the ends of each? That's a heavy work. But the truth is that not all members are really working or are really playing a role inside the trust. And those members are called zero force members. So, zero force members are members which support no loss at all. So, they are just there. That's interesting. It makes the lesson very interesting and trust is what? Very easy to analyze. So, first, it is your duty to find the zero force members in a trust before you even start the what? Analyzation to see the forces in each member. Because the truth is, if you don't do it, by the time you start analyzing, you see that some of the members will be getting zero force. Zero. And you can be working to get zero. So first, you have to check the zero force members in the trust. And what we are saying is that zero force members are the members who support what? No loot at all. Objective, this is very simple. So to analyze a zero force member by inspection, the following general rules may be what? Used. Yes, so how do I analyze what? Zero force members. These are the rules. We have two rules for what? Analyzing. And once you stick to them, you can remove all the zero members from what? A trust. Are we good? So first, if a trust, if a trust joint is formed by two members, and the joint is not subjected to any external or support reaction, then the two members must be a zero force member or members. Must. It's very simple. So assuming I have a joint and two members, you know, always two members form a joint like this in a trust. Let's say this, this is a trust. We are going. This is a trust. I have my F1 like this, F2. These are my reactions. These are my reactions. We will we'll check them. So if a trust joint is formed by two members and the joint is not subjected to any external loads or support reaction then the two members must be a zero force one members so if i have let's assume this f2 is not here are we good so this is a joint being what formed by two members this and that and if you see that this there's no what external load or a reaction at the bottom of these members, then these two members are zero force. So you can remove them from the what? The truss. Are we good? So two joints or a joint formed by two members, remember two, only two. If it is three, it's a different case. If the joint is two, someone will ask, can we have three joint members? Yes. So if there are two and the joint has no external load or any reaction, then we can assume that these two members must, it's a must, they are zero force members and we can take them out. Are we good? The second one, if a trust, if a trust joint is formed by three members, you see here three, the rules must be what obeyed. If a trust joint is formed by three members, two of which are collinear, 
the third member will be a zero force member provided no external loads or support reaction is what applied so one thing you see here is that support reaction and external loads both the rules support reaction external loads so once you see any support reaction or an external load at a joint first just take it off your mind that that member members or that member is what a zero force once there is an external load an f1 or a load or a reaction you cannot assume any zero force member over there are we good so the second one is saying that if a joint is formed by three members of which two are collinear meaning they are straight so let's assume that this example is here i have this certain thing like this this is even a frame but let's assume it to be what a truss and i have this joint collinear this are this is member one this is member two this is member three are we good because there is what a joint i can remove each member and what we are saying that if it is formed by this joint is formed by three members two of which are collinear if two are straight like that collinear on a straight line the third member will be a zero force this one the third one that is what forming on the collinear members that one will be considered a what a zero force member provided there's no reaction but if there is an applied force f here then there's no zero force member here are we good how to identify zero force member so these are trusses we have trust one and trust two this is trust three how do we identify the zero force members so to identify zero force members these are the rules so first if the truss is formed by two members and the joint is not subjected to an external load or support reaction then the two members must be zero force members so let's look at it if it applies here these are trusses are we good so we can see that this there is how many joints one two three four are we good and the first joint has a reaction because there's a ruler here so first there's a, a support reaction so these members can never be what zero force members this has what a reaction a pin a fixed point here it can never and even there are three what members and the rule is saying two so it can never be what zero force this joint has what a load which is an f here so they can never be a what a zero force let's look at this joint yes it is formed by two members and the joint is not subjected to any external load there's no force here and there's no reaction also here then these two the two members that form the what the joint will be a zero force what they are zero force members are we good so we can eliminate them so the force in member cb is what zero and the force in member what cb is also zero we can eliminate them so that the trust will be left with one two and three don't say at this joint this member is forming with that and they say a force here so you know once you check the other end and there's no load there's no reaction and it qualifies to be a zero force you can eliminate these two are we good all right so we, this is clear here what about the third rule if a trust is formed by three members two of which are collinear we can check this trust no joint has what collinear members straight line because this and this they are not straight so the the, third, the second rule does not apply to this let's come to this second truss you see these are trusses slender members it has many points many joints and many what members so in analysis i don't need to work with everything here are we good because some of them are zero force members 
Let's apply the rule. If a trust is formed by two members and the joint is, subject, is not subjected to any load, then our reaction they may be with zero force. All right, so yeah, to form it, this this point two, we are forming two here, so and there's a relation. So this joint can never be a zero force. Here there are three, so the rule does not apply here. There are three, one here, one that, and this there are three cannot. If in this joint there are more than three, and there's a load here, so with the first rule, it cannot be applied. There are three here, there are three, there are three. And these two, there are two members, but there's a reaction. So the first rule could not remove any zero force member from this truss. Uh, we go, let's go to the second. If a truss is formed by three members, so a three member with truss joint, two of which are collinear, the third member will be a zero force member, provided no external load or reaction. So this Second rule is talking about three members forming a joint. So this joint is even out, this and that, they are out because they are two. Let's tackle the thread. We have the rest, every joint is three or more. Very good. So this joint is three members. And this member one, this member two, they are collinear. Two of which are collinear, they are on a straight line, yes. The third member will be zero force. So which is which one is the third member? This is the third member. So definitely this third member will be a zero force. So it is eliminated zero. Are we good? Alright. Now look at this. Now this is this joint is formed by three what, members. One, two, and three. This one and that they are also what, on a straight line, they are collinear, and this is the third one. Very good. So this one is also zero force. When we check here, one, two, three, four. Four members form the point, so the rule cannot apply here. And even there's a reaction here, this load here. So this joint is free. No, nothing can be removed here. Are we good? So this two, they are eliminated. Let's come to this joint F. At F, we have three members: one, two, and three. These two are collinear, and this third one now is what zero force because there's no load here. Assuming there was a force here, this one won't be what a zero force. Are we good? So there's no force here. So this member can be zero force and eliminated. It is gone. All right. This third force, this and that, they are collinear. And this is the third force, and it can be what? Neglected. So it is also taken out. This is two members. Now let's come to this joint. So we are left with only two, with this and that. When we come to this joint, it's formed by one, two, three members. Remember, these are out. But this and this are collinear, yes. And the third member should have been a zero force. But look, there is an external load, P2 here, applied. So this member can never be a zero force what member. So it's, man it's maintained. So you can see it here. What about this? Remember, this is gone. This one is gone. So there's three members what here. And when we look at this and that, they are collinear. And the third one is what? A zero force member. Someone will ask, but there's a, a, a load here. I said once it one of the side obeys what? The rule. You can take it what? out. But looking at this one, this side does not obey the rule. This side does not what? Obey the rule. So it mean, it's maintained. If you look at this CE member, this side obeys the rule. This side does not obey. But it is what? Taken out. Because this one obeys the, the rule. Are we good? So upon eliminating the zero force members, look at what we got. So this is, is the real what? Structure. Are we good? This is the real structure. So they are taking us so that analysis can be made what? Easily. So it's very necessary when you are given a question first, identify the zero force members and it will be what? Helpful.
The same thing can be applied to this and you can check if you can eliminate some zero false words members. When you look at this, this will go. Are we good? Yes. And this one will also go. This one will also move because it is what? There are zero false members. Looking at this, it is formed by one, two, three, four. So four members. Here is about five or six. Here two, about four. So this three will be what? Eliminated because here obeys the rule. Here obeys the rule. And here also obeys the rule. Are we good? All right. So why is it necessary to remove those zero force members? Is it really necessary? Yes. One, zero force members may be needed to keep the trust table or the need for zero force members. Why do we need zero force members in a structure? Yes, what if they are zero force, they perform no action, then why do we need them in the trust? One, they are needed to keep the trust well, stable, to make the trust very stable. Two, they may be required in case there is change in loading or the trust. Are we good? Maybe we want to replace a part we can use them, or maybe now at first the trust was carrying what a 20 newton load, so that's why they performed no what function. Now the trust is going to carry a 60 newton what force, and you can see that those members have to what support to carry that. Are we good? So, whenever there's a change in loading, those parts will start to what function, and if we also want to what make some changes to the parts, we can also use them. Are we good? So the third point is that they are also needed to support the weight of the trust. You know, for a trust, the members, they are slender. So the entire trust will be what? Light weighted. So if you don't add more members to make it at least a heavy one so that it can also support the, let's assume I want to support a hundred Newton force up. And I take a trust whose weight is what? Two what? Newton. You see, <laughs> it may collapse. So when these zero force members are what? There, it can try to increase the weight to, let's say, maybe 20 Newton, which will be what? Convenient to carry my load. That's the reason we include those zero force members. The third one, they tend to keep the trust in shaping. The shape desired and what sometimes for beauty. How we do so? Those members are there to create what the shape, the desired shape. Are we good like that so that we can get a, a trust in shape to be nicely what made so that it to be what the beauty is also what part maybe to be nice. Are we good? So these are the reasons we include or the need for the zero force members. So now we can now start to analyze or dive deeper into the real analysis of how the forces are going to be what made and check that in the next episode. Thank you for watching this episode.